Thank you very much. And thank you, Ritma, for providing a platform to this debate. And I will try to go back why it's so important. Because normally, journalists believe that presenting stories, they will help to change things. If a journalist presented a problem in Berlin and became front page of the newspapers, I'm sure the politicians, the mayor, and members of the government will take care of it. The problem is what happened in Syria? Who will take care of Syria? What happened in Ukraine? How we deal with this problem when there is no state there? And what Germany can do for that? That's why I like the commitment of the private sector helping to develop a process to improve things through stories. And I will go back to that. Because today we are celebrating journalists who are exposing their life to present stories about Syria, Ukraine, and one of them is also about South Africa, four white photographers who were working to expose what happened in the 90s, the beginning of the 90s, with the end of the apartheid. <clears throat> and that's if we know that's a success story. South Africa worked well. And probably the photographers who present the pictures help it. But of course, we need Mandela to move things forward. And we need Leclerc. Mandela was a terrorist and sat in, in jail. And suddenly, became a partner and the actor to discuss a political exit for South Africa. And I would suggest that that was a consequence of important international work, not just a picture of the photographers. It was since 1948, India was pushing to present the South Africa apartheid as a criminal system. And took uh, years, 1962, the General Assembly, UN General Assembly, issued a resolution considering the apartheid system as a threat for international peace and security. And of course, during the 60s, it was in, in the US was a fight against that US apartheid. So US has to support. US cannot fight for civil rights inside the US and ignore this General Assembly discussion. And slowly, in 77, Security Council adopted a resolution um, banning weapons uh, 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 to South Africa. So this was 15 years before the beginning of the agreement in South Africa. So I like to present the success story of South Africa because it shows that success requires time and requires leadership and requires international organizations. And the challenge is how journalists present these stories with the editors who want funny stories, punchy stories, interesting stories. How you present this long process as a punchy story? That's the challenge we're living today. But we're in Germany. This morning, one of the TV, German TVs invited me to walk here around the hotel. And he explained to me, this place was very close to the Nazi headquarters. And also, it's very close to the East Germany, where Stalin was running the show in 1950. So, sing in this place. This place is a perfect place to understand, okay, it took, fee, took some decades, but now we're a free Germany, push, moving the world. And that is for me, we have to be careful. We are not in a bad moment. We're in a great moment. Freedom is winning. But, of course, because in here, it's not a problem. And we have problems in Paris, but we, need to, we, we know how to deal with them. And we have to use freedom to understand better this timing. And also a huge challenge should be how to present Security Council stories in an attractive way. I, this is complicated because it's very diplomatic. <laughs> uh, but you have to present the story. For instance, I remember, you know, China is a former was colonized. So China is not in favor of international law. And China believed in uh, stability. However, in February 2011, when the rest of the Security Council agreed 
to send the Gaddafi case to the ICC, China, China and India were the only two countries who were not totally convinced. And China moved. China liked consensus. It's a very easy thing in Asia. They like the consensus. So China didn't, didn't like to oppose consensus. So the moment when the Chinese ambassador raised his hand, voting positively to send the Gaddafi case to the ICC, was an incredible moment. And we had to find a way that is a story in the media, an attractive story in the media. And that, I think, is the next challenge for us. How to help the journalists, not just to present the stories of the victims, how also to present the, math, the, the institutions who are helping to save the victims. We are in Germany. This country was leading the European Union. And the European Union is the guarantee that the wars between UK and France and France and Germany are gone. No more wars in Europe. And, and that is institution. So that way for me, we need to start to think how we can help journalists, not just to present the story of the victim, who is a, which is appealing, but also the story of the institutions dealing with the problem and presenting the different aspects of the problem and presenting not just, yes, it's, it's awful what's happening in France, but also what's happening with the Muslim people. Two years ago, the speaker here was telling you that in any Muslim house, when you, see, when you watch TV, you see Muslim people attack it. So that's the problem. Jewish are attacked, Muslims are attacked, Christians are attacked, minorities are attacked, and we need to, the same way we develop national states to protect them, in some failure states, in some places, the state is not enough to protect them. And that's why we need to invent some solutions. And that's something Rizma could help. How, I suppose you can start to help how journalists can keep working, not just on the victim side, but also on the other side. But in addition to Ritma, each of you could do, could do something. And that's probably is the, my main message today. Because we don't know what kind of world we are leaving to our children. But we know what children are we giving to the world. This is our responsibility. We can educate the children. And that is for me the proposal. We should think not just how to present in the media, how to present stories in the education, how to transform the education we are discussing, the, the information we are discussing in Syria or in France or in different places and the freedom concept into the schools. We are focused on mathematics and computer system. Please, we need to focus on coexistence and living together. That is for me the crucial part. Thank you. Thank you so much. Because I feel I had this privilege. I was the first prosecutor of this International Criminal Court. This, you have no idea how huge Leap Forward is until the International Criminal Court, the, the international relation is between states in a lawless world. Now, 123 states accepted that even the own head of states could go to jail if they commit genocide, crimes against humanity, or war crimes. So it's a huge step forward, still not all the world with us, but moving forward. And the concept is how to use the law to manage conflicts. That's the concept. And lawyers normally focus the idea of the law in the courtrooms. But for me, the law is not for the courtroom. The law is for you. So Freiburg invited me a few months ago to help them how to educate kids on these ideas. And I was thinking, okay, I'm in Germany. I had to explain to them how, how much you trust in the law. So I use the example of Berlin subway. There is no barriers in Berlin subway to take the train. And all of you pay. It's true. <laughs> you have no idea how this is in your mind. In, in, at the ICC, I have a, an officer who was German, was in Brussels taking a train with a French lady. And he refused to take the train. And the friend said, come on, the train is coming. We are late to the meeting. I cannot take it. The ticket office is closed. <laughs> so for him, it was a barrier in his mind. 
without a ticket, he cannot take the train. And that is for me exactly what I'm trying to explain about the law. The law is not, but we don't need prosecutors checking what's happening in the subway. The mindset is done in Germany, and I think that is one of the secrets of Germany. Everyone knows what to do, and everyone is doing what he has to do, and that's it. Very simple. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I have no idea it was a joke. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. Okay. Then I make this speech to the Freiburg kids explaining how this law is working in Germany, and after my speech, one young student came to me and said, oh, you are so right about the difference between Germany and other countries, including your country, Argentina. He said, I spent two months in Buenos Aires, and one Sunday I took the train to go to the football stadium. And the train station is one kilometer after the stadium. So I was sitting, waiting to arrive to the train, to the train station. But what happened was, when we crossed in front of the stadium, the train was full of fun, and they took the emergency brake and they stopped the train in the middle of the railway. And they forced the automatic doors, they went down, and with the big flags of the team, they crossed the freeway, stopping the cars. And I said, what you did? I was fascinated. But, but I cannot move, I went to the train station. <laughs> so I think that is for me the example, because I don't know how you can export your concept of the law. And probably having this kid in Argentina understanding the law could be different in other places is important. But we need that. So my suggestion is, it's not just helping journalists to present the story with institutions. Please, Redma, we can work together to see how we put in the law, in the books, in education, in the primary school, the high schools, the universities, this basic concept, using the law to manage violence. Thank you very much for this, and thank you very much for supporting the journalists who are exposing their life to expose these crimes. Thank you.